futures close. Thank Thanks to all of you. Thanks, gentlemen. While the war on coal is heating up, as President Obama unveiling new rules for coal-fired power plants, could all of this cost our economy big money and jobs and raise prices? And what will it mean for coal companies and their stocks? We'll find out. Plus, CEOs are supposed to do what's right for shareholders, right? But some CEOs don't care what their shareholders think. They're just taking them along their quest to change their industries. We'll break down five leaders whose top priority is not you. Also, even thieves are picky. We're going to tell you the most stolen cars in the U.S. They do pick them out. All right, we do want to hear from you. Will the EPA's new rules on carbon emissions from power plants increase your electricity bills? Tweet us at FBNATB. Your answer is coming up. Yeah. The Closing Bell is sponsored by TD Ameritrade, bringing you the innovative Think or Swim platform. Five tech stocks with more than a 10% change in aftermarket trading. All the tech stocks with a market cap of at least 50 billion are up on the day. Well, low volume stocks We're breaking into 52 week highs. Six upcoming earnings plays that recently gapped up. Now the world is your trading floor. Get real-time market scanning wherever you are with the Mobile Trader app from TD Ameritrade. They're breaking through with a different point of view. Skip the status quo. From politics to pop culture, the next generation starts now. Kennedy, Matt Welch, and Camille Foster are the independents. Weeknights at 9 Eastern, only on Fox Business. She keeps you on your toes. You wouldn't have it any other way. But your erectile dysfunction? It could be a question of blood flow. Cialis Tadalafil for daily use helps you be ready anytime the moment's right. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. And the same Cialis is the only daily ED tablet approved to treat ED and symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently or urgently. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines, and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any allergic reactions like rash, hives, swelling of the lips, tongue, or throat, or difficulty breathing or swallowing, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about experiencing Cialis for daily use and a free 30-tablet trial. What Super Polygrip does for me is it keeps the food out. Before, those little pieces would get in between my dentures and my gum and it was uncomfortable. Just a few dabs is clinically proven to seal out more food particles. Super Polygrip is part of my life now. Barnes & Noble getting a big boost today, climbing more than 9%. Let's head back to Nicole Pantolini. She is on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. For details, Nicole. Well, a nice day on Wall Street, right, Dave and Lori? However, a great day for Barnes & Noble. As you see, the stock, as you noted, a nice big move up there, up 9.3%, closed at 18.41. And that's a huge move, but you can certainly say thank you to Barron's because Barron's had a report over the weekend, and we often use the phrase Barron's bounce. Well, this certainly was exactly uh, evidence of that. And in that report, there was eye-popping potential for fair market value of 36 bucks for uh, Barnes & Noble, in particular looking at the underappreciated area of the college business for Barnes & Noble. And as a result, everybody jumped in to buy Barnes & Noble. And uh, after this, the, they basically said that it's undervalued for investors. So many of them read that and jumped right in, hoping for more. Back to you. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Well, the S&P futures are closing. Let's go back to my man, Larry Shover, in the pits of the CME. Larry, any sense of what it'll be like tomorrow? 
You know, right now, traders are accepting the fact that two chief themes have driven the market last week and today. Good economic data, PMIs, housing, and also central bank commentary, whether it be uh, Dudley's uh, remarks, whether it be Bernanke, whether it be this, uh, the, the FOMC notes. That said, traders also realize that we're in a multiples market. And if you're assuming $119 per share for the S&P 500, that puts us 16 times earnings per share. That's not expensive in my mind. However, it doesn't allow any shock absorbing if we have any kind of pullback in the market. So traders are mindful of that. They're also reaching for June the 5th, the ECB. Will Mario Draghi pull another rabbit out of his hat? God, we keep hearing about the pullbacks that never come. Larry Shover, thank yeah, you very much, my right. friend. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Well, there are some CEOs who go way beyond reading balance sheets and worrying about next quarter's profits. In fact, they are out to make a difference and change their entire industries. If you're a shareholder, it may not be a good thing to have one of those CEOs at the helm because sometimes they don't care about what Wall Street thinks. <laughs> Joining us now is Jeff Reeves. He's InvestorPlace.com editor. Jeff, I love your piece because I've seen it happen so often. You have these visionary CEOs who think that their visions are so important, they don't have to worry about the investor or the stock market or the stock market price time and time again and sometimes they do it at their own peril let's start with somebody that everybody knows uh, Tesla's Elon Musk he actually said something a couple of years ago I guess it was about a year ago they really shocked the hell out of me he said the stock price that we have is more than we have any right to deserve I've never seen a CEO sort of talk down the share price but that's exactly what he did yeah, and he did it at $170 a share, and so now that Tesla starts with a two, I mean, you wonder what he thinks now, right? And, I mean, it's, it's nice when you buy into these companies and they have a visionary CEO, and Tesla actually has been very nice to shareholders if you've owned yeah, for the last, sure. actually, since IPO, really. But, you know, the, the, the million-dollar question going forward is, if you're an investor right now and you're looking down the road, wh where's Tesla going to go? Now, Elon Musk has kind of been derisive of, of hydrogen fuel cells. He's making a big bet on the Gigafactory, and as an investor, you are too. And, frankly, uh, I mean, Elon doesn't really care what's going to happen next quarter or maybe even for the rest of this year he's in it for the long haul so if you're swing trading tesla like you you got to wonder where the disconnect is between the ceo and you again it's great if if tesla's vision pay, plays out well and elon musk is, is crowned as the next visionary out there that's wonderful but if he's not well <laughs> you know as, as a consequence you have to deal with as, as an investor jeff let's move on to facebook mark zuckerberg i think you wrote here he's diluting the pants out of the shares <laughs> and buying whatever he wants essentially <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, people haven't really talked about this a lot with uh, the deal making that Facebook has, has done is that when the price tags come out in the media and you hear things like $17 billion for WhatsApp or $19 billion, whatever it's at, it moves because it's based largely on Facebook stock. And you can't really sell high if you're Zuck, right, because he's got this huge control, controlling stake in the company. What you can do is use common shares to do buyouts of other companies and, and not pay cash for them. So, you know, he's got a, a more than half of the voting rights of the company in, in his pocket alone, and then he's using... Uh, company stock to basically acquire other companies. One of the, the deals he was making earlier this year uh, for Titan Aerospace is for some massive like fly around the world internet network. Uh, that's, that's what he likes to do. He likes to think big, likes to buy Oculus VR that has very little to do with Facebook advertising yeah. now or, or maybe ever. But that, that's what you get as a shareholder is when Zuck has more than half of the voting rights of the entire company, frankly, you don't get a say. You well, don't. Uh, and and another, need to another understand Another guy that. who likes to think big, real big, is Jeff Bezos. And, and and his ideas are so big that he thinks profit is secondary right. <laughs> to his ideas. That really hurts yeah. a lot of shareholders' feelings. Yeah, and actually this year it's proof positive that shareholders have kind of gotten tired of it, right? Amazon has been has played their cards very close to their vest. They don't give away a lot of information. I mean, famously, the Washington Post, which Bezos now has a stake in, asked him about this recent spat with publishers and Amazon about book pricing that they're fighting with, and he, he won't talk to the Post. He doesn't talk to anybody. You have to trust that he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't, want, I don't want to knock him. De de Jeff Bezos is much smarter than I may ever be. But if he makes a mistake as a shareholder, you're, you're along for the ride with that. And you have to hope that his vision of profits someday is good enough because you sure as heck not going to get him now. And Mr. Schultz of Starbucks famously telling a shareholder who didn't approve of the company's policy on gay marriage to just sell their shares. They put the employee yeah, first. Yeah, I mean, uh 
Yeah, Howard Schultz is an interesting case too because I mean he literally has nothing to prove to anybody. He basically built Starbucks. Starbucks. He's a he's a great entrepreneur. He's proven himself to Wall Street. He came back. He, he resurrected the company again. If anybody has the rights to tell shareholders they can just sell the stock, it's him, right? He's already built it. He's already been there. And so again, it's a double-edged sword. He knows the company inside and out. And as a shareholder, you're, you're along for the ride. Just you have to be careful with these CEOs though because if they missed up, I mean that's that's also something that you have to deal All with because right. they're, they're clearly not taking outside advice. Well, let's go back to history and not only do you have to be careful as CEOs have to be careful of Wall Street because sometimes it can literally kill their organization people Express Airlines was one of those first low-cost no frills airlines back when they deregulated airlines back in the 80s there was a guy named Don Burr who started he actually made it to the cover of Time magazine by the way there's his picture back when I, I actually believed so much in his philosophy. I bought a little bit of the stock. I watched it go all the way down to zero. Eventually, the company <laughs> was killed because he didn't give a damn what Wall Street. He had no. He paid so little attention to Wall Street. So it can really kill a company. Some of these CEOs have to be careful, right? Yeah, and it's not even that they have a bad idea. I mean, Burr is a great example. Southwest is one of the most successful airline stocks out there because they decided to go for low fare, high customer service. And that's, that's kind of what People Express tried to do, but they just didn't execute enough for investors. And that's, again, the, the fine line you have to, to walk as a CEO is it's great to be a visionary and to have this idea. And I would actually argue that Burr's vision has been validated by the success Absolutely. of Southwest. Absolutely. It wasn't, va wasn't validated for his shareholders. Not nah, for you, Dave. Not Sorry. At all. <laughs> all right, so for the, the current companies, Jeff, that we're discussing, here, obviously, shareholders will see the goodwill and the the I don't want to say dilute or or the delusions of grandeur, but basically, I guess in terms of the PR world, what's working out and what's not working for these guys. Well, I think it's very important to understand that in this current environment right now, right, everything is aspirational. You just had a segment on where, you know, it's a multiples market, and I think people want to believe in growth. And there's nothing more powerful right now than the narrative of some of these companies, right? Starbucks literally was overexpanded. People thought it was dead. It, it basically rejuvenated the whole instant coffee market. Whether it's a company like Google, where, where Sergey and Larry are, are ruling the world, they have their own little world order there. Or if it's a company <laughs> like, you know, like Tesla, where Elon Musk literally has taken the electric vehicle into the mainstream. It's, it's hard not to believe in that narrative. The, the challenge, though, is making sure that stock valuations, investor expectations for earnings, and all that other stuff has to go along with it. It's not that I think that Tesla is ever going to go away. I think it's a great brand, and, and they're really good products if you've ever been in a Model S. But right. you can't confuse the narrative with the stock price. And unfortunately, if you're a PR firm, you don't really care much. All you're right. selling is the narrative, and that's what investors are buying. Good lesson to keep close to the vest. Great Jeff stuff, Reeves, Jeff. Thank you. Great story. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Well, Thanks, Republicans say the Obama the Obama administration is waging a war on coal. Next, we're going to find out how the president is adding fuel to that debate. And 